Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Uh, I did promise a few episodes ago in this channel that I would improve the quality of my videos um, with adding uh, pictures and text so people can so you can kind of follow you know what fragrances I talk about and then also in the text box below I'll list them in the order that I actually speak about them. Um, I'm not sure I can do this every time because I have realized now that it is going to take me a bunch of extra time um, but I am going to try it um, and I think I can I can I, I spent a few hours today kind of teaching myself um, and it does improve the quality for sure and I feel a little bit you know proud of what I'm putting out there but I'm not sure I can keep it up because right now I need you know work that will actually pay the bills and so far at least this does not um, anyway I have four fragrances here to share with you today and they're all from Zoologist and I'm gonna talk about them from the bottom up because there's one here that's a real kind of hate almost uh, and then there's one that is kind of pleasant, but I probably would not wear, at least not, I don't feel that way right now. And then I have two here, um, one that is kind of nice, but I don't think I'd buy a bottle. And then there's one that I really like and that I might in the future at least uh, consider a bottle. So why don't we start then with um, the one that I like the least, or I really don't like it at all, and it's called Cockatiel. Um, it is, I guess, a bird a cockatiel, uh, and they're kind of like, you know, perky and energetic birds. Um, and uh, this is, it's just the weirdest combination of notes to my nose. It's like super cloyingly sweet, and it has rhubarb, so it's also sour. And as the minute I put my nose to the top like this, I was like, I don't know if I can spray this on myself. But I did actually force myself to try it on skin just to see if it would get any better, but it's just... The, the opening is horrible. I, I think it's just, it, this is not a good fragrance. But I'm surprised to see that it has 3.85 as like the average grade on Fragrantica. It came out in 2022 and it's created by a guy from Germany called Sven Pritzkolate. And I don't know much about him. Um, I know that zoologists, they use all different perfumers, uh, some of them more famous than others. Um, this is really strange. Um, it has champagne. That's kind of an unusual note. It has raspberry and also powdery notes, mimosa, vanilla in the base. I think the vanilla is the really sweet part. It's And cashmere on is a tricky note for me. It usually goes too sweet and makes it too kind of like fuzzy, like, like non-transparent and non-clean. I, I don't like this fragrance at all. That was cockatiel. Next up is camel. And camel is kind of like a desert-like perfume there it has some spices it has some incense it has it smells a little bit like it's quite animalic in the opening and almost a little urinal it has like notes of like civet and oud um it smells a little bit like the camel section at the zoo <laughs> like you imagine like a camel laying around in kind of the hot sun kind of excuting this like like animal animalic smell it's like not unpleasant you know when you go into a stable there are horses there and it's kind of like a kind of a comforting smell going on in there but you don't want to actually put it on your body this is the way i feel about it anyway um i mean i i don't dislike this it's just to me something that i don't i wouldn't like wear i don't think um it was created by someone named christian cabanel carbonell i've heard this name before this guy it has like a 4.04 average on fragrantica um okay this perfumer has also made herba pura and accento from um, uh, from Zerjoff and Mandala from Mask Milano, if any of you are familiar with, with uh, those perfumes. It has dried fruits, it has incense notes, some rose, myrrh, cinnamon, so it's a little spicy. It's very like oriental and I, the, the what's it called, L'Air de Desert Marocain from, from Annie Tower kind of comes to mind, but that one is a more of a classic amber, like a resinous classic perfumey amber. This is more of like a this is so much more animalic. It just smells like animal, you know, like in kind of a pleasant but non-perfume kind of way. So I will not be looking for a bottle, but I, there's quite a lot of hype around. I mean, I've heard a lot of people talking about Camel, so you actually might like it. Maybe I'm just different, you know? Um, okay, so let's work our way up here. The one that I like, the, um, my number two on this little list of four is Sacred Scarab um, from, and I don't even know what kind of a, what kind of an animal this is. Maybe I should have researched this a little bit better. Um, this is created by like a, um, a perfumer with a kind of Arabic name, Sultan Pasha, 
who has a house, his own house, a, a Tars. Um, this is, uh, it's weird. I can't, I cannot match the notes that are listed with what I'm getting with my nose because to me, if I just smell this like this, it smells like a beautiful white floral perfume. Like I'm getting like gardenia, tuberose, maybe lily. I can't exactly pinpoint, maybe some orange blossom. It's floral. It might have a, maybe a tropical flower in there. I would have guessed, but looking at the notes. Okay. So this is going to surprise you. It, I mean, it has aldehydes in the top, civet. I don't get much animalicness from this. And lemon, really beautiful opening. And then it has lotus, which I guess is a floral note, which I'm not so familiar with. Red wine and plum. Don't get that at all. I really don't like red wine even to drink and not on off, off of other people's breath either. <laughs> I think it's yeasty and I think it's like not something that I would, you know, gravitate towards at all. And then it has like this really interesting kind of base listed here, myrrh, incense, benzoin, oak moss, amber, labdanum, raisin. Uh, so like dried fruit kind of experience, uh, musk, styrax, galbanum, cedar, and cade oil. So, I mean, this is like, to me, I would have guessed this was something a little bit more like honor from Amouage, like a white floral, a really nice white floral, like wedding kind of fragrance. So I, I cannot quite match these up. Um, but I guess it has a little bit more of an interesting background, perhaps. But it's a mixture of white flowers, like in a, in a nice bouquet. I really like this. I mean, I'll definitely wear more of this and see what I think. I don't think I would buy a bottle because I have other white florals and, and all kinds of florals and a little hesitant to buy because white florals kind of, kind of, that was what got me into niche and now I kind of got a little bored with it. So I think the fragrances need a little bit more than that. And I think this one actually has that. It's just that I, let's see if I, I had, yeah, here it is. I mean, it's really nice. I just think that it's just not that, maybe not that special. I would go get a zoologist white floral. I'm not sure. It's it's really nice though. This one I will wear again for sure. My favorite one of the four is chipmunk. And it sounds so cute, I think, chipmunk. And of course it's nutty. It has not, um, it was created by a, a, a quite unknown perfumer that only has three perfumes in the, in the Fragrantica database. Her name is Pia Long. And this has like nutmeg, cardamom, and quince in the top. And quince is like an apple-like kind of fruit, so it's a little bit tart. It's described as aromatic, fruity, um, note, sour and dry. So it's like a non-sweet kind of fruity note in the top. Pink pepper and blood mandarin. Those are the top notes. In the middle, there's hazelnut, oak. I don't usually read the notes like this, but I just think it's interesting to see and tell you what I, what I can get myself from this. Chamomile, balsam fir and earthy notes. Um, yeah, I think I can kind of get that too. Um, it's, it's, I mean, it's a really, uh, it's like a semi gourmand uh, kind of uh, perfume. And in the base, it has cedar, guaiac wood, vetiver, benzoin, amaris, uh, which is a, let's see, fresh piney balsamic citric note. And it has patchouli, apoponax, animal notes. And I don't find this so animalic. It's really interesting. This is layered, it's interesting. There are things to discover in here. I get some florals. Um, I'm not sure where the florals are coming from. Um, it's kind of like perfumey. It gives me a perfumey feeling. Um, it's it, what, the first time I wore it, I, I put in my notes that this is a weird mix of notes. Um, and I, let's see, I thought the notes were clashing in the opening, but I don't, now when I tried it again today, I no longer think that. I think it's, they come together really nicely, like right from the beginning, which is kind of strange that I feel so different about it. Um, was somebody wrote it for Grantica that it smells a little bit like old people? I don't know what they're talking about because I don't feel that at all, but it's like something a little bit sour. Maybe it's that fruity note on the top. I'm not sure, but it's it's just re it's really interesting. I like this one. This is like, I'll wear this again for sure. This is, it has like that nuttiness, was a nutty, like a buttery nuttiness. And oak is not the same as, it has oak, it does, that's not the same as oak moss. But it does have also other earthy notes, so it actually might be some oak moss in there too. But like oak is a, like, I guess a, a wood smell, you know, the wood smell of the, the, the wood oak. 
I, I find this interesting. Oh, it also has, yeah, Blood Mandarin. So maybe Blood Mandarin together with the quince is giving this little tart kind of opening. And it has a little bit of, of herbalness and it has, I, I really like it. Okay, so Chipmunk is my top, my first pick among these four. And the four that I, that I was talking about, Cockatiel, um, Camel, Sacred Scarab, and, and Chipmunk. So um, I don't know if this is for you. I don't, I feel a little bit like, you know, I, I own one fragrance from Zoologist um, and that is Koala. And it is the same kind of, I can get that DNA like in kind of all of these a little bit. Um, I'm starting to learn like what Zoologist is all about. And I feel a little bit like that they're not so perfumey. Like I do think that Sacred Scarab is like that one was the one, let me see, did I say the right thing now? That's the one that is to me like a white floral which is very perfumey, a little bit French leaning, kind of French perfumery. But this is, um, like koala is more like of a, it's kind of an, it's, it's inspired by the koala's habitat. It's not really like, oh, this is a perfume. I'm going to a party. I'm going to put this on. It's more like I can sit there and, and have a little experience, you know, like an experience of like maybe being um, under eucalyptus tree and looking up and seeing this little cute animal, you know, chewing away or sleeping because that's what koalas do most of their lives, like 20 hours out of 24 every day they are they're asleep and that, otherwise they're like chewing on these oily leaves. Um, but that does have a kind of an oily kind of feeling to it. I mean, I think I like it. I just never, like, to what kind of event would I wear koala? It's kind of a little, it's a little bit of a strange fragrance. Like, it's not... Um, it, it wouldn't make me feel sophisticated or beautiful or feminine or it's more like a statement like I I don't know maybe I would wear it to like a zoo event or something <laughs> I don't know I think it's an interesting house I'm not ready with it I really love chameleon I have like a few drops left of chameleon that I do plan to wear when the weather starts to warm up but we just got another layer of snow this much and we're now into April so I don't know what's going on in Sweden um, spring is not on its way at all Okay, that was all for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video.